Veteran actress Gina Rollins enjoyed a mostly blissful, decades-long marriage to her husband John Cassavetes until his death. While the two remained as in love as ever throughout the union, they experienced their fair share of challenges. Aside from their famed and inspirational love story, Rollins and Cassavetes were lucky enough to appear in numerous films together. There's something to be said about a couple who's able to spend all their free time at home together and still collaborate in their professional lives. Gina Rollins is a four-time Emmy and two-time Golden Globe recipient. She's best known for collaborating with Cassavetes in ten films, including Gloria and A Woman Under the Influence. She won the Silver Bear Award for Best Actress for her stunning performance in 1977's Opening Night. Some of her other notable films include Woody Allen's drama Another Woman and the 2004 romantic drama The Notebook, the latter of which was directed by her son, Nick Cassavetes. John Cassavetes was a Greek-American actor and filmmaker noted for being a pioneer of American independent cinema. Many of the films he wrote and directed were financed, at least in part, out of his own pocket. He's been called an iconoclastic maverick by the writers at All Movie, while The New Yorker, in 2013, called him one of the most influential American directors of the last 50 years. As far as acting, Cassavetes appeared in films like Edge of the City, The Dirty Dozen, and Rosemary's Baby. As a director, he worked on the independent feature Shadows, as well as Faces, Husbands, Opening Night, and Love Streams. Cassavetes' decades of hard work and dedication in the industry earned him numerous awards and accolades, including an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his appearance in The Dirty Dozen. In 1968, he was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for Faces. Less than a decade later, he was nominated again for an Academy Award for Best Director for 1974's A Woman Under the Influence. Clearly, Rollins and Cassavetes were a true Hollywood power couple. That being said, when they had marital troubles, they did everything in their power to keep them under wraps. Join Facts First as we discuss how Gina Rollins and John Cassavetes hid their troubled marriage. From college romance to Hollywood. Gina Rollins and John Cassavetes met at the American Academy at Carnegie Hall. Rollins was born in Cambria, Wisconsin in 1930. Her mom, Mary Allen, was a housewife who eventually worked as an actress under the name Lady Rollins. Gina's father, Edwin Rollins, worked as a banker and state legislator. In 1939, Rollins' family moved to Washington, D.C. when her father was appointed to a position with the United States Department of Agriculture. He later held several other high-up governmental positions. Gina was inspired by her mother's love for theater to seek a career in showbiz. While she first attended the University of Wisconsin, she later left for the Big Apple to study drama at the prestigious American Academy of Dramatic Arts. John Cassavetes was born in 1929 in New York City. His mother was actress Catherine Cassavetes, who would later be in some of John's feature films. His father was Greek immigrant Nicholas John Cassavetes. John was raised in Long Island, where he attended Port Washington High School. It was there he got his first taste for acting, appearing in numerous class plays, including a production of Red Domino. Eventually, he transferred to Blair Academy in New Jersey, where he finished up high school. After graduating, he spent a semester at Plattsburgh, New York's Champlain College before being expelled for poor grades. He spent several weeks hitchhiking to Florida before enrolling at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. He had heard from some of his friends that the school was, quote, packed with girls, but little did he know it would be there he'd meet the love of his life, Gina Rollins. After John graduated in 1950, the two met in 1953 when Rollins was auditioning to enter the Academy. After dating just four months, the couple got married in early 54. Cassavetes continued to act in theater and eventually was offered a handful of minor roles in films. Around this time, he began working on TV in anthology series like Alcoa Theater. As time went on, Cassavetes landed more and more parts in TV and film. He eventually gained fame when he played a vicious killer in 1955's The Night Holds Terror. In 1959, he made his writing and directing debut with his film Shadows. John Could Be Cruel as a director, Cassavetes was known for being extremely demanding. He could be manipulative and, at times, downright cruel. But that was the nature of his craft. For example, when filming his 1971 film Minnie and Moskowitz, he failed to tell his wife Gina in advance that he would be playing the part of her lover Jim until right before filming. When a scene required him to hit her, she decided to get back at him for not cluing her in about the situation by letting the film crew think that Cassavetes had actually attacked her. They subsequently sprang to her aid, and it was a whole big thing. 
She even pretended to be hurt. In his autobiographical memoir, Cassavetes on Cassavetes, the actor and filmmaker made note of just how dissimilar he and his wife actually were. According to him, their tastes hardly ever aligned, and whatever point he tried to make or belief he had, she always seemed to be on the complete opposite page. Despite constantly butting heads and never being able to see things eye to eye, both John and Gina worked tirelessly to keep the romance alive. Cassavetes and Roland's disagreements likely stemmed from their differences in upbringing and their temperaments. Gina had grown up in the country and came from a well-off family, while John was a fast-talking, streetwise city slicker. His wife was socially refined while he was rough and tumble and very passionate. He could have a bit of a temper, but that only seemed to make him better at his craft. He was the kind of person who knew what he wanted and would be damned if anyone got in the way of his vision. While on set, this half-crazy side of his personality sometimes manifested in him displaying almost frat boy-like tendencies. For instance, on one occasion, he walked through set with a banana lodged between his butt cheeks. He probably thought he was lightening the mood, but not everyone appreciated his juvenile attempt at humor. Other times, to elicit an authentic, unrehearsed emotional response and his co-stars, he would resort to being abusive. One actress who was at the receiving end of this behavior was Lynn Carlin, who Cassavetti slapped across the face before filming a scene while yelling at her not to cry. These days, a person like that would be canceled in an instant. Cassavetes met his match with Rollins. While Cassavetti's volatility in the workplace stirred up tensions and created uncomfortable levels of friction, this side of him was also at the root of what seemed to be his deep, long-lasting bond with Gina. Rollins was just as strong-willed as he was. When they got together, it seemed as if Cassavetes had met his match. The strength of her will is clearly displayed when you watch her on-screen performances, especially when Cassavetes was in the director's seat. She's a fierce, expressive, and remarkably graceful woman who was more than capable of holding her own. She also wasn't afraid to step up to the plate and fend for herself when she needed to. On one occasion during the making of Shadows, he and Rollins were badly in debt. Roland also happened to be seven months pregnant with her son Nick, and they owed the milkman over a grand. The couple had set aside $300 for hospital bills, but John took that money and using it to help fund his film. When Gina found out what he had done, she told him she'd have to deliver the baby on her own, and it didn't matter if he felt remorse for taking the money because he wouldn't be there when it was time for her to deliver. Later, after the child was born, Cassavetes went to California to begin shooting the TV series Johnny Staccato. When Rollins flew out west to visit, it's as if he totally forgot he was the father of a newborn. He was so immersed in his work, he didn't even take the time to ask how his son was doing. Later on in their marriage, Cassavetes began sleeping around while engaging in bouts of binge drinking and gambling. At one point, he even said that a married man had the right to, quote, get drunk, screw around, and go to the whorehouse. Despite these issues, Roland stayed by her husband's side. Their romance may not have been something out of a fairy tale, but in many ways, it was more beautiful than that. They had their fair share of problems, and Cassavetes had a tendency of making an ass out of himself when he was caught up in his work and his endless search for pleasure. At one point, they toyed around with the idea of divorce, but ultimately, they were able to let the past stay in the past. Now it's time to hear from you. What part of the story is most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below.